Hey, happy Monday. I am Meredith. I am here with our message for the 13th of May, 2024. We are tuning into the energy atmosphere of the day with the gorgeous Tarot of the Owls, one of my favorite decks in the collection of tarot decks. Uh, yeah, we've got the sun in Taurus. We have the moon in Leo as of six o'clock, six something this morning. And we have Pluto retrograding in Capricorn till October. Awesome. Um, let's see what the cards have to say. It was a wild shuffle, by the way. Cards just flew out of the deck. It was amazing. So I really feel like they have a story to tell. And uh, there was a lot of energy in this shuffle. So our first card, what are we starting out with today? <laughs> The star, how sweet is that? Look at us flying right into fulfillment, right into our guiding star. You know, for so many weeks, we've talked about how it's important to be, allow ourselves to be guided by our own intuitive gifts and blessings. And I feel like that's represented here. There's great momentum in this card. There's actual movement. The owl is flying into the heavens and I feel Feel that this is an aspect of us bringing heaven to earth and that's what we've been keeping the faith for and that's what we've been doing our spiritual journey work for because I feel like all the messages about accommodating and making way for what the will of fortune what the divine delivery system is bringing to our foundation is showing up right here in the star cards let's see what comes next wow eight of swords you all know this card as a mental trap and you know we've got a blindfold on the owl we've got bound wings as in we can't seem to get out of that it's up to us to liberate ourselves though I feel like even though this card comes second I feel like if that's what's happened here on the star this is a representation of us liberating ourselves setting ourselves free here so that we can move deeply into all the fulfillment we've been keeping the faith for. I also feel, you know, my guides are perky gump at the moment and they're talking about, um, there are so many of us that have been uh, attempting to heal, to let go, to co-create with the divine, the vision that we have for our oncoming, for our now and our oncoming. And I have the feeling that this Eight of Swords represents uh, every story we've ever told ourselves about how that fulfillment just doesn't seem to be happening. So pick a topic, any topic in your life where you feel you have experienced some level of challenge or struggle within self-relationship. Just contemplate that for a moment and, you know, take, take a moment to also validate and acknowledge that while you may not necessarily see the evidence of what it is you have been aiming at, keeping the faith for, uh, flying into fulfillment for, while you may not necessarily be seeing evidence in the now moment, this Eight of Swords is representative of every doubt we've ever had. And I feel like this is what we're flying free from here under the essence of our own personal self-sovereignty within self-relationship. So regardless of evidence or not, these three cards are coming together and letting us know that we're closer than we think. And that's a message. We're closer than we realize. And that's a message that has come to us on repeat recently. So even if things do not look or appear the way you anticipate them to look or appear in these now moments, there's a great transformation taking place. I feel so strongly that the message of transformation that has followed us for weeks is profoundly manifesting in the now on our foundation. So stay connected to your self relationship in a very deep way. Stay sovereign to the divine connection you have with source and everything that you are in the act of creating fulfillment for and with because Evidence is appearing, and I feel we've already set ourselves free from this Eight of Swords, which is what gives us flight here 
in the star card and which gives us the contentedness we witness right here in the nine of coins. Beautiful card. It's it's another one of those messages that says, congratulations, you're at home within your own self. And thank goodness you've been able to expand, to let go, to do it, whatever kind of spiritual journey, healing work that needed doing. And now you've accommodated exactly what you've been in co-creation with the divine for. That's what's revealing itself. That's what's showing up. Evidence is going to start to appear all over the place. What did I just say? Transformation, right? And there's the death card. Whoa. Hello, Scorpio. Thank you for showing up in the reading once again. This is exactly it because this is the card where you have a simultaneous completion fulfillment ending with a new beginning, a new fulfillment, and a fresh start. It all happens right here in the death card. We should be seeing the infinity symbol on this card <laughs> every time because there is some of each and the other and there's a beautiful cycle and a rhythm to transformation metamorphosis and we are witnessing our own metamorphosis because we're being sovereign within self-relationship and cultivating just the kind of energies that we need to accommodate on our foundation to support our legacy of happiness that's the Ten of Coins. That's the Ten of Cups. That's all the cups we've seen recently. And they have shown up profoundly. Let's see what's next. Seriously, look at that High Priestess. This is a phenomenon. This happens on this tarot table so often. If you turn over the High Priestess or the Death card, one of them is not far behind the other. <laughs> and I love this combination because it's great confirmation for us because the high priestess is all about what? Our intuition, our intuitive, psychic, supernatural, soul-powered gifts, right? And we're listening to this voice, this steady, consistent voice that has no doubt, that has total certainty in it. So again, I'm going to repeat for you, those of you who have not seen evidence you are being invited and asked to lean deeply and profoundly, Scorpio death card, into this gorgeous high priestess energy. Go deep with yourself because it is there where you will find where you have been bound up. You have been blind to your own uh, ego programming, belief system, matrix style energy you're you're all about creating your own divine matrix so that's what's happening here in the star card and it happens because of transformation metamorphosis and the ability to see beyond the illusion in front of you and on the eight of swords we are dispelling illusion beautifully <laughs> let's see what's on the bottom of the deck how are we being assisted behind the scenes by the beautiful multiverse. Our first card is the Ten of Wands. Excellent card to have here. I love this, I love this 10 because, and I know it gets an eye roll from everybody because it's called the burden, as if we are carrying a heavy burden. So let me reframe this card for you. This is the Ace of Wands to the power of 10. What is the suit of wands all about? I share this with you so often. Creativity, passion motivation, enthusiasm, skill, talent. These are all the resources we have, creativity, all of that's within us. And we just have to show up with all of our resources to create everything that we are in fulfillment for here in the main body of the reading. And then we have, oh, so sweet. There's the sun, <laughs> the happiest card in the major arcana in all of tarot actually. There's brilliant clarity here, there's truth, there is celebration, love, and happiness. <laughs> there's courage in this card as well, and there's a very passionate heart beating within this kind of energy right here. So bring your resources into the brilliant clarity, love, bliss, and happiness of the sun, and take dynamic action 
There's number seven out of the major arcana, the chariot, child of the emperor and the empress. And this is a card about not having any hesitation whatsoever to take action on everything that we are in transformation metamorphosis with. And I feel that that chariot is guided by the high priestess here in terms of intuition and using our gifts. We are dynamically diving deeply into our gifts and that is our momentum. Next, we have the Five of Pentacles. What a stunner of a card right there. You know, this is a card that indicates where we've left ourselves out in the cold. And look, we're, we're on an ice flow over here on the Eight of Swords. So wherever we left ourselves out in the cold manifested itself into the Eight of Swords over here right? And we're making changes there, big, big changes, because this can't stand. We can't create all that we're dreaming about here under the sun and in the star card as well, if we're still sabotaging ourselves. This is why we've got that nine of pentacles, so that we get into our self-sovereignty and we do the transformation work that's required so that we can follow the prompts Listen to the inspirations that come out of our gifts. You know, fives are all about change. They have us confront chaos. And in the suit of coins, we're confronting chaos that we've created for ourselves out of old stories, belief system, and programming that tell us manifestation is hard and our dreams are too difficult to create. That's BS and we all know it. And yet, somehow the ego gets away with that and creates a level of sabotage. But we've recognized that. The death card has helped us see that because we've either not transformed or metamorphosized previously, and that came at a very high price. And you can see it in these two cards right here. Five of coins, eight of swords. So why wouldn't we be dynamically, passionately, and with great happiness, courage, and clarity addressing just those energies because this is someone else's story that we believed at one time. Let's see what's next. Yeah, beautiful. There's the temperance card. I'll stop. Oh, I was going to say I'll stop there. <laughs> Look, there's the emperor. Mm -hmm. How sweet is that? Temperance, Archangel Michael showing up. And this is us blending energies that are not commonly found together. Now, do also keep in mind, we had recent eclipses where rare and uncommon energies come to us. They are, you know, raining down on us from the heavens and we are, we are absolutely transformed by those energies for our own highest and greatest experience. So we're witnessing that here with temperance. It's a reminder. There's a lot going on that we don't necessarily know about because how belongs to the universe, how things get done, the way they get done happens on a universal level. What gets done is driven by what we're thinking and the resources we bring to the table. So what kind of resources are you bringing? Are you bringing your passion, your creativity, your enthusiasm, your excited anticipation, your vision, right? Are you bringing all of that? The cards are saying bring that because that's going to fuel that's going to fuel the momentum for everything you have been keeping the faith for over here on the star card. So listen to your intuition and follow that energy in a very dedicated way. <laughs> All right, Angel Answers. Great opportunity to put a question to this deck while I shuffle. Get confirmation for something for yourself. Our first card. <laughs> yeah, I know. Some of you are going to eye roll on this one. Perfect timing, which is divine timing. There are no clocks. There are no calendars when it comes to divine and perfect timing. It arrives when you get out of your own way. <laughs> okay, next. And we have... Meditation brings answers. I do like seeing this card because this is a reminder that meditation is also an action. So many people are like, oh, meditation, what? I have to go sit and be quiet somewhere? <laughs> oh, no. 
uh, yeah, do that. Go sit outside on your uh, porch swing and listen to the birds sing and get in tune with nature. And pretty soon you'll be having all manner of inspirations that add to the vision you hold for your own divine matrix. Next, we have ooh, a whole bunch of them falling out. Peaceful resolution. Yeah, forgiveness. One more, take action. Peaceful resolution, it's right there for you. It's a part of your own divine matrix. And I feel that that comes when we yield to our own faith and our own intuitive gifts and blessings. And then we have forgiveness. Anything that is outstanding for you, if anything comes to mind that seems to be an obstacle or a block when it comes to the kind of fulfillment we're talking about here with the star and the transformation that's required, transformation could happen with the whole Pono, Pono prayer, right? So I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. That's Ho'oponopono. You do that for any situation you find yourself in and you'll discover that the energy shifts so gracefully with very little effort on your own part other than to be completely in your heart center and faith and inspiration as you do such a thing. All right. Final word on the reading for us today from Soul Power. How is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? All right, and we have, oh, how perfect, for real, Divine Matrix. <laughs> That's the matrix you want to engage. The divine matrix where you make all of your own dreams come true by contributing your joy, your happiness, your vision, your inspiration, and all of your intuitive gifts. You bring it there and let the universe work its magic on your behalf. Have a beautiful Monday, everybody. Thank you, as always, for joining me here. Peace, love, namaste.